Okay, so if you have a Maki HR624 monitor that doesn't switch on, then it's probably a blown fuse or a capacitor. So let's have a look at how we can fix that. First thing to do is take the monitor and put it face down. You'll have the amp that sits on the back of here, so eight screws will undo that. Don't take it off just yet because this won't have any slack in it, so lift it up a little bit and then find these retaining clips and loosen them and that will give you that slack. Be careful of the speaker because you don't want to damage that. And you'll still need to put something on your desk because there's not enough cable for this to go all the way down to the desk surface. So make sure you're unplugged from the mains, um, goes without saying. And with your circuit board, the first thing to check are the fuses. There are two on this circuit. They're the same fuses, um, T800, which is T for time delay or slow blow, and 800 for 800 milliamps. Five millimeter diameter, 200 millimeter length. You can get these in packs of 5, 10, so they're easy to come by, not expensive. And just even if they look okay, do a continuity test across both terminals. Uh, this one was actually blown for me, but it looked okay, and I went out and changed the capacitor, even though it turned out to just to be the fuse. So if everything's okay there, then move on to your capacitors. I have a link in the description below, which will take you to a site which helped me figure this out. It's pretty straightforward. You have three capacitors here. The main one to look for is this one, C65. That capacitor is a 63 volt and it's 4.7 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor. And you just need to change it out. So to get to it, they normally sit flat on the circuit board. So you can see how the legs are um, just over there. So just rock the capacitor back and forth until the legs break off. Get your soldering iron and then you can um, uh, melt the solder out and put the new capacitor in. Just make sure the polarity is the correct way around. Here we have the negative side, the negative side is the right hand side. Uh, so just make sure the polarity is correct. You'll need to remove this cable as well. Just push the plug on the back and then you can move it out of the way, which you'll need for your soldering iron. So that's it, you just take that capacitor out and then put the new one in. If you still have uh, trouble, then you might need to do the next one, but this seems to solve everyone's problems right here. If you want to do a nicer job, then you can get to the back of the circuit board, um, just takes a little bit more time, and all you do is on the side of the amp, you undo the four screws on the side, and then on the back, uh, there will be eight Allen head screws. So you can undo those, and that will allow you to lift this whole board um, up and then pivot it this way and you'll have access to the bottom here. What that means is you can then um, solder the points here and then just pull the capacitor out rather than breaking it off and then you can then place the new capacitor and have it flush on the board um, and that will do a better job for you. Uh, I've tested this and it works so it's up to you if you want to do it that way but that should be it. So. Uh, to get yours up and running, fuses, and then capacitor, and you should be good to go. Thanks.